Hey, it's Ellie here. Welcome back to the podcast. I actually haven't done one of these for a long time, for a year or just over a year, I think. And I'm getting back into them now and a lot has changed. So that's why I'm doing this first episode back on change. Now, I know a lot of people uh, that I know have had a lot of change uh, and people that I don't know as well. Over the last year and a half, we've had a worldwide massive shift uh, of change with COVID and that has really affected people in lots of different ways. Now, when COVID first hit was actually when I had my third child. I went into hospital at the start of April last year to have my third baby just when the whole world was locking down for the first time. And it felt kind of eerie. It was good to be in the hospital. I was only in overnight, but it was good to be in the hospital away from the world. It felt like we got to have our own little bubble and we were going through a massive, beautiful, life-changing, special moment where we actually got to enjoy the time with our baby without having anyone trying to come around or work that needed to be done or anything like that, we got to really insulate and be with my close immediate family. Now, as time went on, this also became very difficult because my family, my mum, my dad, my siblings, um, my still very close family weren't actually able to see my daughter until she was nine months old. And that was really hard for me, living interstate, being away from my family and friends uh, and, and going through all of this. My family over the other side of the world have still not met her and I don't know when they will. And that's a really thing, hard thing to deal with. Now, when, I was, uh, when all this was going on last year, I was living in Adelaide in South Australia and I knew that I wasn't happy there but I didn't think that I could change this. I felt like I didn't, uh, I didn't know what would happen with my relationship if I left. My partner is from Adelaide, all his friends and family were there. I felt like I would lose him if I said yes to doing what I wanted to do. And so I didn't think it was an option. And then at Christmas time, when we came up to Queensland to see my family, my partner started saying, hey, we should move here, make this happen. And so I started thinking about it. I started looking around and I started getting a lot of negative information, negative stories. People saying you could never find a place up here. People saying they were living in their cars. People really struggling because there's a massive rental crisis at the moment on the Gold Coast, which is where I wanted to move to. Now, I'm not usually someone to let that kind of stuff affect me, but I was at first. I was going, oh, this is going to be hard because I'd made a decision and attached beliefs to it as well that I would lose my relationship, I would lose my comfort zone, I would lose my house, my safety, money in moving. And until I changed this, I couldn't get a different outcome. And so I stayed in Adelaide longer than I really wanted to, longer than I should have. And one day, my partner left. He actually left before me. And then I was left without my partner there with three kids by myself, no car and a house to pack up. And that's not to say he didn't help me. He did help me before he left as well. That's not what this story is about. Uh, but what this meant for me was, oh shit, I've got to get my shit together. It gave me that deadline and that push to go, yeah, I really don't want to be here anymore. I'm going to do something about it. 
And I realized, and you might realize this too, at different times in your life or maybe right now, the times where your beliefs, your head is holding you back from getting what you want and you're deciding to sabotage, to be comfortable, which is not really comfortable, but to feel safe, to stay in the known, your daily life of this is my house, this is my stuff, this is what I do in my day, this is the shops that I go to, these are the people I spend my time with. What if all of that changed in an instant? Now, if you want these things to change, if you want something to change in your life and you're deciding not to change it, then you start losing things anyway. Because you're saying you want something, but you're not living in alignment with that. And when you're not living in alignment with that, everything starts to go wrong. The relationship breaks down. You snap at the kids. You lose energy. You gain weight. You lose money. You lose your job or your clients leave. All these things start happening, this chaos, this external storm, because you're saying that you want something, but you're not going and living in alignment with that. You're not living in alignment with who you are meant to be, who you, your identity is, or living in alignment with your values. So what needs to happen is you need to make the decision, the internal decision to change. And then the external starts shifting. Now, this can happen on the small scale and the big scale. I decided I was going to leave and I decided when I was going to leave. And I got rid of most of my possessions. Even my childhood piano, that was a really hard one to get rid of. And as I let go, I created more space physically and also mentally and emotionally. It was a massive journey to go through that, all that letting go. And as I let go more and more, I created more space for the new, for what I really wanted. And so I packed up the house, I got rid of the things, I sorted everything that needed to be sorted there, and I moved. Now, before that even happened, a couple months prior to that, I came up to Queensland with my two daughters and I looked at places. And when everyone was saying there's a rental crisis, you'll never find out anything, I made a decision that, oh, well, I'll just take whatever I can get. And shortly after I'd made that decision, I thought, that's not like me. I don't want to hold on to that. And so I decided something different. And I took myself through a process where I decided exactly what I wanted. And I wrote it down in minute detail, down to the furnishings and the deep bath and the number of bedrooms and the facilities that I wanted and the location and everything. And I wrote it all down and I visualized it and I got myself in the mindset of getting it and being there and achieving it and letting go of any negative belief stories, things that are happening in the world. And I decided that's what I'm getting. And by doing that, I then cut out everything that wasn't that. I didn't even go to look at those places. And I zoned in on exactly what I did want. And I found it. And then I went back to Adelaide. And when I actually found that I got the place, they wanted me to move within three days. And I said, I can't pack up a two-story house, three kids and move into state in a matter of days. Now, this process wasn't going the way that I wanted. What I wrote down on my, in my journal was that there would be an easy application process and a great landlord and, um, and real estate. 
So I didn't get exactly what I wanted because those things were off. And even after offering to pay three or six months of rent in advance, there was a communication barrier, a a language barrier, and it just didn't happen. And so I felt a little bit upset at first, but then I decided, no, I didn't get that because it wasn't exactly everything I wrote down. Don't settle for anything less. If it ticks nine out of 10 boxes, it's not a hell yes. It's not a 10 out of 10. And so I decided, no, I want to live in that apartment complex. The facilities are amazing. There's a two pools, a one of them's heated and indoor. There's a gym, a yoga and Pilates room, a theater, a games room, a pool table, a library, a sauna, a steam room, a massage room, uh, amazing, amazing facilities. I decided I want that. I want a smaller apartment that's furnished with amazing facilities. I don't want to have to worry about a big house anymore. I want to simplify my life and I want to live there. And so I found another one in that same complex that was available. It was a little bit more expensive and I contacted the real estate and I ended up being able to apply for it without flying back up there. I applied for it sight unseen and within a week I got it and shortly after that I was moving up here and now I've been living here for the last few months with my kids. So there's a lot of lessons in that but it's in deciding what you want and not settling for anything less and letting go of the stories and the limiting beliefs and being the version of you that gets everything that they want by going and being it first and then going and taking the action steps to get it. Now, what happened, like I said before, was my partner moved up here before I did. And he's ended up getting a place that's an hour drive from here. He decided he wanted to be in his own area and build his own community. And for me to be here, we've got things we need to do. And when we were in each other's space, we were just being too dependent on each other and just spending all our time together. And so we've decided, no, we need to focus on ourselves first. And so that's beautiful. We still get to be close to each other and be able to get on with our own things. And it's the best of all worlds. And right now I'm saying this with a lot of gratitude and a lot of love for what's happened and a lot of positivity. But it wasn't easy to get here and it wasn't easy once I got here. I thought, oh, it'd be hard just leaving um, Adelaide and packing up the house and doing all of that. It'll be easy once I'm there. I'll have all my friends and family around. I'll have a new place. I'll have simplicity. But it was harder than I thought. When I first got here, I got bronchitis, the baby got bronchitis, we were really sick and I was looking after three kids while sick, (laughs) which is really hard and my mindset was just in a really bad place because I wanted to, you know, move forwards and, and sort everything out but I was sick, I couldn't and so my body was saying, you've pushed so hard to get here, you need to rest now, you need to look after yourself before you take the next steps. And so I had to fully surrender to that. And then those first first probably month or so, once I was actually in the apartment, because before that we went to the Sunshine Coast in Byron Bay, I wasn't settled in yet. And so I decided to take it one step at a time. And the first step was I realized I was eating out way too much. So that meant that I wasn't eating as healthily as I wanted to. My weight wasn't coming down, I'd hit a plateau, and I was spending way too much money eating out. And I know that my daughter bonds over making meals together and having family meals together. So there was a lot more to it than just health and money, it was family as well. So I started cooking at home more. Even before I was in the apartment, when we were traveling around a little bit, 
we got in a good routine with our meals, with our food. And my daughter and I now make dinner together most nights and it's beautiful. We have family meal together every single night. Then I started getting the kids in a better routine of keeping the house tidy. Then I started getting in a better routine with my exercise, with my steps and with my gym workouts. I got the kids into school and daycare. I bought whatever we needed for the house, even though it was furnished, there were still some things I needed to buy and, and sort out with the house. And I got all those things sorted. And I really nailed the identity and the habits of being an amazing mom. And that felt really fulfilling. And it felt really amazing to do that. And I started losing more weight and my daughter's been healthier. And it was just really, really special. Then it got to the point where there was avoidance and self-sabotage going on. And where the mom identity wasn't really fulfilling me anymore. Baby was in daycare three days a week by this stage. The kids were in school. And I was spending my days thinking about all the things I wanted to do with my business, but struggling to actually take action. And I'd find myself wandering around the shops, going and getting my hair done, getting a massage, going to the gym, getting my steps in, sorting the house, but not really doing much to move forwards with the things that I said I wanted. And so I needed an identity shift. And that identity shift was, well, how do I be the amazing present mom and the healthy person that I'm being, as well as being an amazing leader? And you see these parts are fragmented. It's in parts. How do I be this and this and this? But instead, what I realized, the new identity I wanted to step into is the integrated woman. The woman who is integrated, who is whole, who is balanced, who is in flow. She doesn't need to figure out how to do all the things because she is being the person. She is being the identity of it all. And so it all just flows. And I focused on one area at a time and then built up from there. The kids, the house, the health, and now the business. And when I was able to add that in last week, things started clicking and changing almost instantly. I got a new admin on board. I created a new program. I, um, which I have, I think seven or eight amazing women in, I almost doubled my income already this month. We're only not even halfway through the month. Uh, my more weight started coming off more present with the kids. And this was all through school holidays as well. Um, and, and having the kids with me full time, but it was that internal commitment and decision and shift in identity to be able to get everything that I wanted. And what started flowing from there was more action, more confidence, more leadership, more expression, more creativity, more ideas, more happiness, more abundance. And so the thing is, we can have it all and you can change it all, but it's really important to just focus on one thing at a time and not try and put that pressure on ourselves or guilt ourselves into changing it all at once. And I did an amazing training with my clients today around identity and values and how to actually create lasting change rather than focusing on doing all the things because we only have so much willpower to get the things done. There has to be a total flip and it all starts with our identity. If you'd like to know more about that and doing the work on becoming the greatest leader and the greatest expression of yourself. I do have a program called Becoming and it's about for women who have really kind of lost themselves in work or being a mom or being a partner and really focusing on finding yourself, finding your full expression and your truest self. So 
So um, connect with me on Facebook. It's Ellie Bursco. Or you can send me an email or my personal email, ekbursco at gmail.com. I'd love to connect with you and let me know where you're at and what you're going through, whether it's uh, asking questions about my program or just asking questions about what I've covered today. Now, the last piece I wanted to share is when we have this massive change, it can feel overwhelming. We can have overwhelm, anxiety, stress. But when we actually let go and simplify and see change as a positive thing, we're letting go and shedding layers of all the things that aren't serving us anymore to get more of exactly what we want. And just getting it one step at a time, we release that pressure and realize we don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to change all at once. And when we let go of that, it will actually change faster than you ever thought. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please connect with me. Um, let me know what you got out of this and please share it around with any other women who need to hear this as well. Uh, I hope you have an amazing day and I hope you've enjoyed this podcast.